For this demonstration, what I want to do is retouch this picture of Bishop. And what I want to do is go from beginning to end and show you how the retouch setup works. I still wanted to show you the speed at which you can actually retouch if you use your tool presets and you use your actions and you have an efficient retouching system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my retouch setup. So I'm going to press F12. And it did the retouch layer, it did the snapshot, and the history marker. It does all that for me. And then I'm going to set up my history options to make a snapshot when saving, because that's going to give me a timestamp. So then I'll save it. So there's the timestamp. We'll retouch it from beginning to end, and then we'll do another save. And you can see exactly how long it took me to retouch this. So let's get going. I'm going to first go File, Save As, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. And it looks like we're get, there we go, 507. So let's zoom in. And the first thing that I'm going to do is what bugs me the most, which is under his eyes. So I'm going to choose my retouch face setup. And it's going to give me the tool that I need. And it sets me up with the right opacity and the right tool. Then I'm going to Alt-click under his eye and just soften these lines under his eyes just a little bit. And then I'm going to scroll over to the side of his face and soften these lines a little and soften this line. And I'm just continually sampling from different places so I, ha I get a really even effect. And let's use a smaller brush down here. I'm going to lighten up this little groove and these little lines just a little bit. And soften the shadow, soften this dark line here, and the transition here. Now we have light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. It's striped. So as we lighten and darken the values, it smooths it all out. Basically, I'm knocking down the shadows and bringing up the highlights just to smooth everything out just a little bit. Let's smooth out his nose just a little bit. There's a little bit of a shadow here. And I'm going to soften those lines in his forehead. And I'm not trying to remove them. I just want to soften them a little bit. And on his forehead, we have a big shine going here. So I'm just going to switch over to the patch tool. And we'll patch it, drag it over to a smooth spot, and then edit fade to about 50%. And that does a beautiful job on shine. I think we need just a little bit more on these lines here. That looks pretty good. And as I come back to his face, now I'm thinking, well, he still has lines here. So let's zoom back. This is always a good policy to zoom back and take a look at before and after. So I turn the eyeball off on the retouch. Oh my gosh, it looks like I over retouched him. It is so easy to do. Because you adjust to how they look and then you fix more things. Here's where the history brush is awesome. I'm going to go to my history brush. It's already set up for the right place. And I'm going to use my preset called Undo Retouch. It gives me a nice soft brush, 15% opacity. And then I can just swipe, swipe, bring back 15% of reality so he doesn't look quite so retouched. And we'll just tone that back just a little bit. Maybe this too smooth right here too. And that looks more like the bishop we know and love. Much, much better. Maybe a little bit more there. So even though that was like probably 50 clicks in the history and there's no way I could go back to that, this allows me to paint back some of that. Then I can zoom in. Now I'm really happy with his face, so let's make a new snapshot and move the history marker forward. Then we won't undo any of that. So next is his eyes. I'm going to choose the dodge tool for catch lights, and we're just going to brighten up his catch light in his eye just a little bit. And then maybe the, the uh, half moon would be nice. We'll just brighten up the half moon on his eyes so it's a little bit lighter. And zoom back. It's real easy to overdo. Yep, looks like I overdid it. So let's just back off that catch light just a little bit, just so it's not so glaring. That looks much better. Then let's use our lasso tool. We already covered this. We're going to whiten the whites of his eyes with lasso, a two-pixel feather. And we'll just do curves, lighten it up just a little bit, and say OK. That looks really nice. Now his teeth could use a little bit of whitening, so I'm just going to use my brush. 
and let's say B for brush and make my brush just a little bit bigger. Let's just choose a soft brush here. And then we can paint a little bit of white, only about 30%, so it whitens up his teeth just a little bit. That looks much, much better. He could use a little bit of vignetting, so we'll just press F3 for our vignette, which will automatically do a vignette. We're just waiting for the 250 pixel blur on the edge. That takes a couple seconds usually. There it goes. And then maybe we'll duplicate that since we need it a little darker here. Now it's a little dark on the top. So I think I'm going to use my gradient tool here and we'll just back off the top so it's not so dark on the top. That looks really good. The last thing it needs is a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to press F6 and do a little sharpening on top, which will add a separate layer and sharpen it selectively. That looks really great. And I think that is a major improvement. We have uh, before and after. Let's just make another save. File, save, and we'll save it to our desktop. And then let's take a look at the timestamp. 507 to 512. Looks like about five minutes. That's pretty good. I would say that was a major improvement for five minutes. But the amazing thing is how easy it was to control our work and just to go at it as fast as you can and then back it off. Because you don't really realize until you back off the face and you look at the whole thing and then you realize, oh, wow, I really did a lot. So then you can measure it and get it to look realistic but still be an improvement. Another thing is real easy to add problems to a face. You might just get like a little dark area that looks like a dent and you don't notice it until you turn the retouch on and off. And then you realize, oh, you made a little problem. So that's how you can fix it.